Mindfulness Moves Yoga channel. My name is Emma, and today I thought I'd share with you some of my favorite yoga props. I've got my little bookshelf here with a few of my all-time favorite things to use in class, and I thought it would be great to share with you some of my favorite tools that maybe you could bring into your house. Everything that you see here today will be listed down below in our bio with a link to, as to where to buy so that you can get these tools at home for you and your family. Let's get started. Okay, the first prop that I'm gonna be talking about is my Hoberman Sphere. Now you've probably seen this in a few of my other videos and that's because I absolutely love it. I got this sphere off of Amazon and they come in a couple of different sizes. This is one of the smaller ones. I work with a lot of younger kids so I find that this is an easy one for their little hands to hold on to. Now my favorite thing about this sphere is that it grows bigger and then it comes back to be smaller. So this is a wonderful tool to use to help teach our kids about breath and how important our breath is. It's a way that we can show them what happens to their lungs when we breathe in oxygen and when we breathe out oxygen. It's also a great tool to practice deep belly breathing, which is really important in yoga. We can imagine this ball inside of our stomachs, kind of like balloon breath, but this gives them the visual. So as we breathe in, we're filling up our stomachs with air. And as we breathe out, we're letting our stomachs relax back down. This is definitely a prop that students really connect to because of the fun colors, what it does, and you can make it really, really fun. We pass this around class and everybody gets a chance to open and close with breathing. So if you wanna get this prop at home, you can do the same things with it. You can practice breathing. There's a few games that you can play with this Hoberman sphere as well, which will come in the package when you get it. But it's a great tool for breath definitely suggest getting this. And even as young as toddlers, as young as two, that's who I even use this with. And they really connect with this ball. Okay, the next prop that I wanna share with you guys is my yoga pretzels card. Now these yoga pretzels cards were introduced by Baron Baptiste, which is who I've done my training with. These yoga cards are such a great tool to use in class because it also gives kids a visual. It's excellent for our younger kids that need that extra visual, but it's also really great for the older kids doing yoga because they're able to take these cards and independently learn the poses. It really starts to help build their confidence. Sometimes in class, I hand out these cards and then each student gets to teach the class the card that they got. So you'll see that I have three different cards in my hands here. And I'll pull up this first one here, Rock Pose and it puts it into a section. Each of the cards are color coded to one area. So this is forward bend. There's also standing poses, partner poses, balancing poses. And then there's three words that represent this pose. So rock has grounded, silent, and still. And on the, on the back, it tells you how to actually get into the pose. So like I was saying before, the older kids, eight plus, who can read the cards, who are independent, can look at these cards and actually learn how to do the pose without me even instructing how to do it and then be able to teach it to the class. There's also always a really great connection piece at the bottom here. Maybe a question, something about the pose, how it relates to your life. So this is also a great piece when we're going around the circle teaching our poses. I get the kids to answer this question and it really connects the yoga pose to our life. One of my favorite things about these cards as well are partner poses. This is just a fun thing to help get the kids out of their comfort zone, connecting with the class. And at home, this is a great thing to try as a family. Siblings, aunts, uncles, mom, dad, whoever it is, can try these poses as a family. And it doesn't always have to be just two people. You can definitely get creative and add the entire family into the pose. Okay, my next prop that I love is my mindfulness jar. Now, I made this mindfulness jar myself and I have um, instructions on how to make this jar in one of my blog posts that I'll share in my 
bio below so that you can learn how to make one of these jars yourself. They're really, really simple. All you need is a jar, water, some glitter glue, and there you have it. You've got your very own mindfulness jar. Now this jar is great for so many different things in class. We often use this jar to pass around at the beginning of class as an introduction. It's also a really great tool to introduce meditation. That's my favorite way to use this jar. The glitter inside the jar, when you shake it up, swirls all around. And I explained to my students that this is like the thoughts and the feelings that we have in our head. Sometimes they're just swirling around and we can't get our minds to quiet down, to focus on one thing. But as you watch this jar, even as I'm talking, you can see all the glitter start to settle at the bottom. And that's what we're able to do with our mind when we use our breath to calm our bodies down. We're able to clear our minds. This jar is a great tool to bring in self-awareness, not only of ourselves, but of others as well. When we learn to be aware of our thoughts and feelings, we're starting to build self-awareness. We're able to see it in others, we're able to see it in ourselves. And the most important thing is recognizing how we feel and being able to explain that to somebody else. This jar is also just a lot of fun to look at. So even our littlest yogis, who may not fully understand what self-awareness is and the emotions that they're having can still connect to this jar and as they start to grow up, we'll have more awareness about this. Okay, the next prop that I love using is books. And they can be any books. The book that I've got here is I Am Peace by Susan Verde. She does a lovely job with all of the books that she has. They're mindful, they're yoga related, they're one of my favorites, but I have so many other books that I use in class too. And books are such a great way to engage your kids in an activity. Books have beautiful illustrations like this one. They have wonderful descriptions about what's happening. Susan Verde's books are one of my favorite to use because it's often filled with yoga poses. Now you can do this with any book that you have, but a great way to combine movement with mindfulness in reading our books is by adding actions to the books. So in I Am Peace, there's different yoga poses and whenever I say I am peace, I get my students to pick a yoga pose to go into. There's another book that we read about bunnies going skating, and there's so many different poses to do with that. You can decide with your child how you'd like to act out this book. Let them use their imagination, let them move their body however they'd like to, and it keeps them engaged reading the book the entire time. Okay, the last prop that I wanna share with you today is a movement scarf. Now, who remembers these in creative movement class, dance class? They are so much fun, light and airy, colorful. I have all different colors of these and they are definitely a class favorite. I love these scarves for so many different things, but one of the best tools that I use this scarf for is breathing. We're able to hold the scarf up in front of our face and blow on it. And the kids can visually see the scarf move. They know that their air is blowing out onto the scarf and moving it. It's also wonderful just for some creative movement. Yoga doesn't always have to be about the poses and the postures. It can also sometimes just be about fun, about being creative, about being yourself and moving your body how it feels good for you. So I love to give my students one of these scarves, turn on some music and just let them have fun. It's magical watching them use the scarves in different ways. Now, another one of my favorite ways to use this scarf with some of my older kids is by scrunching up the scarf into a little ball, hiding it so that you can't see it. And then on the count of three, we throw the scarf up and then you have to try and catch it with a certain body part or maybe in a certain pose. We crunch the scarf up, hide it in our hands, throw it up into the air and then maybe catch it in tree pose or airplane. Try and catch it on your foot, on your knee, on your pinky, wherever it might be. And it really starts to bring in even more body awareness. 
knowing that when the scarf goes up and it's coming down, that I'm somehow gonna have to catch it on my elbow. And how am I gonna move my body so that I can catch it there? Definitely such a fun prop to use in class and it would be so much fun to use at home. Even laying down, placing it on your belly, watching it lift up and down as you breathe. Movement scarves are so much fun and so versatile. Well, there you have it, everybody. Five of my favorite props to use for yoga class. These props are all available on Amazon and I have the links in the description below that you can purchase and have at home for your own mindful space, starting to bring in movement and mindfulness into your home. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for more Mindfulness Moves Yoga. We'll see you next time.